Uh, well, let me call this meeting back to order. Um, this meeting of the Board of Chiropractic Examiners is being held by teleconference. The date is Friday, May 24th, 2024, and the time is 9.01 a.m. The board's paramount responsibility is to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public through licensure, education, engagement, and enforcement in chiropractic care. Please be aware that this meeting is being recorded. Please turn off or silence all cell phones. And we will now take the roll call. Ms. Cruz, would you please take roll? Yes, and uh, clarification to address again. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have my sheet. Yeah, you want me to Hold on, get one. One moment. All right, thank you. So as I call roll, I will be uh, calling out your address and please confirm if there is a member of the public present. Dr. David Paris, 3455 Knighton Road, Reading, California. Present, no members of the public. Thank you. Dr. Lawrence Adams, 101 Andrew Street, Sonoma, California. Present, no public members present. Ms. Cruz, 1625 North Market Boulevard, Suite N220, Sacramento, California, no members of the public. Present, Dr. Daniels. Present and no public members present. And uh, Dr. Claudia Sandino. Oh, shoot, I didn't say her address. 1165 Park Avenue, San Jose, California. Okay. Now, Dr. Claudia Santino, 1625 North Market Boulevard, Suite N220, Sacramento, California. Present and no public um, audience. <laughs> and Mr. Raphael Sweet, 4100 West Alameda Avenue, third floor, Burbank, California. Present, no members of the public. All right, we have a quorum. Okay, great. Um, thank you. And uh, before we get started, I just want to remind um, everyone today that we are on uh, some uh, some time constraints and uh, we have a, a, a fairly large agenda and to the petitioners um, and everyone involved, if just a just a friendly reminder that we would like to um, focus the testimony on uh, rehabilitation. And uh, again, we're not here to relitigate um, any of the cases. So uh, moving forward with that, I'd also mention we have two um, ALJs with us today, Judge Marcy Larson and Judge Corin Wong. And I believe uh, Judge Larson is is taking over first. And so um, Judge Larson, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, good morning. Yes, I'm Marcy Larson. I'm the judge assigned to uh, the first of the petitions, the petition for early termination of probation. And I just want to let our court reporter know, I will let you know as soon as we go on the record, and then I'll let you know when we're off the record for this matter. So our first matter is uh, uh, the petition for early termination of probation. It's home on Debegar, and I know if he has counsel as well. Um, and so I just want to make sure they're both present. Counsel is Mr. Um, Zalen, correct? And this is the moderator, and I have just promoted Garrett Zalen. So if you would like, you may begin your camera and your audio. And I see you're unmuted. And do you see us on the audio? I see the audio. I, you need to hit start video on your computer to start your screen there you are both of you wonderful thank you all right then we're both together and then miss good morning and then miss heim is also with us yes yes okay in just a moment here we're going to go on the record uh, for the first hearing, I will have the board members um, state their names for the court reporter and I'll establish a quorum and then uh, I will explain how the hearing is going to proceed briefly and then we will go ahead and get started. So as soon as our court reporter tells me she is ready, we will go on the record. Ready? ready. On the record. Good morning. We are on the record it is May 24th, 2024 in the matter of the petition for early termination of probation by Homan Dibagar. This matter is being heard before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California. 
is case number 2024-040-860. Chiropractic board case number 2016-01068. Um, will the board members uh, please state their uh, parents for the record, starting with our chair. Dr. David Paris. And Dr. Adams. Present. And Ms. Cruz. Yes, Jeanette Cruz, present. And Dr. Daniels. Yes, Dr. Pamela Daniels, present. And Dr. Sandino. Yes, Dr. Claudia Sandino, present. And Mr. Sweet. Yes, present. Right. We do have a quorum. May it please take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General. Yes, thank you. Good morning. This is Patricia Weberheim appearing on and pursuant to Government Code Section 11522, representing the people of the state of California. My role here is to assist in fact finding. It is not adversarial. Thank you. Right. And counsel for petitioner. My name is Garrett Zellen, Z-E-L-E-N. I'm present with Mr. Diva Gohar, who's seated to my left. All right, good morning. So I just want to remind you how the hearing will proceed. Um, as you know, the board is concerned about any rehabilitation um, Mr. Dibigar has undertaken since the discipline of, discipline of his license. The Deputy Attorney General will proceed first. She will submit and identify the petition pack and packet, uh, and that will be moved into evidence, and she will provide a brief orientation of this matter. After that, Mr. Dipagar will have an opportunity to make his presentation. Um, he can testify under oath and be asked questions uh, by counsel. Ms. Heim will also have an opportunity to question him, and then I will ask the board members if they have any questions for him as well. Um, please remember that the board members have the benefit of the petition package, so you do not need to repeat anything. Um, if there's specific things you want to identify for the for the board in the petition pack and package, you can do so. Um, at the close of the presentation of evidence, both parties can get, give brief, brief closing remarks. The matter will be submitted. You will not receive a decision today. Um, the board will go into closed session at the end of the day and issue a written decision. All right, with that explanation, Ms. Heim, if you would please give the board members a brief overview of the history of discipline uh, and provide, um, identify the petition documents. Thank you. I, I will first identify the petition packet. And uh, so I would first like to mark for identification and offer into evidence exhibit one, which is the petition packet and includes the following. A petition for early termination of probation signed under penalty of perjury on January 5th, 2024. This is followed by a petitioner's typewritten letter of explanation, which is also dated January 5th, 2024. There is a letter notification of passing the California chiropractic examination, which is dated December 20th, or excuse me, December 10th, 2021. There is documentation of successful completion of the special purposes examination of chiropractic or SPEC dated April 4th, 2022. Documentation of successful completion of all five areas of ethics and boundaries essay examination administered by the ethics and boundaries assessment services within the first year of Mr. Dibikahar's probation. Also documentation of finding and approval of a certified public accountant, Ms. Christina Bell in California to monitor Mr. Dibikahar's billing practices. There are also several certificates of completion showing compliance with continuing education requirements for his license renewal, notice of employees of his probation status, quarterly reports by the CPA re uh, regarding the record keeping and billing practices for Mr. DeBickelhar, a memorandum dated April 16th, 2024 regarding his status of probation compliance noting his full compliance with probation. The packet also includes the decision and order in case number AC2016-1068 
OAH number 2021-040-764, which was effective October 21st, 2021. This reinstated, immediately revoked, stayed, and placed Mr. DeBitahar's license number DC-30890 on five years probation with terms and conditions. The decision in order after the rejection of the proposed decision in case number AC 2016-1068, OAH number 2016-041091, which was effective September 24, 2017, which ordered that Mr. DeBithahar's chiropractic license number DC 30890 was revoked. Finally, this, oh, excuse me, the packet includes the, the original accusation number AC 2016-1068 filed on December 24th, 2016. He was also provided with a notice of hearing and proof of service dated April 22nd, 2024. At this time, I would offer this packet into evidence as exhibit one, and I can provide a brief history of his license history with the board. All right, Mr. Zalen, any objection to the petition package and documents identified by Ms. Heim as Exhibit 1? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 1 is admitted. All right, please continue, Ms. Heim. Thank you. On March 28, 2008, the board issued chiropractic license number DC 30890 to Mr. DeBughar. The license will expire on October 31, 2024, unless renewed. This license was revoked pursuant to a decision in order rejecting the proposed decision effective September 17, 2024. On May 20, 2021, the board conducted a hearing on petitioner's petition for reinstatement of his revoked license. Following that hearing, the board granted the petition effective October 21, 2021. The license was reinstated and immediately revoked with the revocation stayed and placed on probation for five years with specific terms and conditions, which Mr. DeBibahar has complied with. On February 24, 2016, the board filed accusation number AC 2016-1068 against petitioner. The accusation alleged 10 causes of disciplinary action against him for unprofessional conduct acts of moral turpitude, dishonesty, or corruption, false representation of facts, act of fraud or misrepresentation, accountable billings, false or fraudulent insurance claim, writing in support of a false or fraudulent insurance claim, false or fraudulent claim for healthcare benefit, false statement presented in support of a claim for insurance payment, and false statement prepared in support of claims for insurance payment. This accusation arose from petitioner's fraudulent billing of patient PS for services, services that were not actually rendered. Routinely billing patient PS's license carrier, insurance carrier, excuse me, for chiropractic services never performed and fabricated associated SOAP, S-O-A-P, notes pertaining to chiropractic services not provided. Overcharged patient PS directly by debiting thousands of dollars from patient health savings account above and beyond the amount owed by patient PS, and they were often unrelated to any dates of service claimed by Mr. Dibibhar. He failed to reimburse patient PS or the insurer for any overcharges or charges related to fraudulent billings within 30 days of being informed of the wrongful charges. Petitioner is now petitioning again, oh, excuse me, petitioning for early termination of his probation. And because the burden is on Mr. DeBibahar, I have no further statements, but I do reserve the right to question Mr. DeBibahar after his statement. Thank you. All right, Mr. Zellin, any opening remarks? Well, I'd, I'd like to say first and, and foremost, we appreciate this opportunity to be heard before the board. Uh, we feel that Mr. Deba Gohar has done everything he can possibly do and more to demonstrate to the board his strong 
belief and desire that he understands this, uh, uh, these allegations, these convictions, and understands what need, needed to be done by way of corrective action, has taken those corrective actions, has undergone what uh, he believes is a uh, full review of all of his practices, and has uh, come forth on the other side of this, having completed this, uh, with a new and renewed understanding of his both responsibility to be clear and transparent uh, in terms of his billing and to make sure it is uh, scrupulously correct and to make sure that he satisfies the board that he is doing and has done everything that is necessary. I wanted to point out two uh, what I believe to be salient facts in this matter. Uh, so while Mr. Deba Gohar was placed on uh, probation uh, for five years in 2021, he ha actually had been suspended for two years from uh, 2017 to 2019, awaiting hearing before the board. So the remaining uh, years that uh, uh, were considered when the probation was imposed, we are asking the court to consider uh, that his suspension has included those two years uh, that were delayed in terms of a hearing due to both COVID and filling vacancies on the board. We would hope that the board would consider uh, the totality of the package presented to it, as well as uh, another salient fact that it is the CPA who has been overseeing the billing practices that has on numerous occasions suggested that this probation should end and his supervision should end and that his billing practices are scrupulously clean. So with that, uh, I would ask that the board please reinstate with uh, an almost immediate effect is licensed to uh, full status. All right, does Mr. Dipagohar wish to testify? He'll be happy to answer any of the board's questions. If you need him sworn, he's happy to be sworn. I don't think uh, given the extensive nature of the package submitted uh, that we, we have anything further in terms of a statement, but if there are any questions, he'll be more than happy to answer them under oath. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and swear him in. That way, if Ms. Heim or the board members have questions, he can answer those questions. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Say it louder, please. Yes, I do. All right. Please state and spell your name. My name is Human Dibogohar, H-O-M-A-N, D-I-B-A. U O H A R. All right, Mr. David Carr, it's a little difficult to hear you. So if you can get any closer to the microphone, that would help. I'm also going to ask you to not only keep your voice up, but speak a little more slowly than you would in a conversation. The reason for that is we have a court reporter. Her job is to take down everything that's being said. And it can be difficult when we're are all appearing remotely to make no sure that we can, she can hear you and that we can all hear you as well. I'm also going to ask that if anyone, when, when you answer a question, just to pause before you answer the question to make sure that the person asking, asking the question is done with the question before you answer it. All right. Yes. All right, then um, if you have no do you have any um, testimony that you want to begin with before I ask Ms. Heim if she has any questions for you? I don't. All right, Ms. Heim, any questions from Mr. Yes. Dibagar? Yes, thank you. All right, please, please start. So, Mr. Dibagar, one of the items that you included in your packet was the notice to employees. Did you know any of those employees before you hired them? I did not. How did you discuss that notice with them? Well, I explained my situation that I was on probation. I gave him a background of why I was on probation. I gave him the packet so they can read through it. I made a copy for them. And just as a precautionary uh, measure, I had them sign that they understood and that they accepted the position knowing the facts. 
Thank you. You also you also submitted information on pages B, C, E, 36 through 63 of the information of retaining Ms. Christina Bell to assist you with monitoring your record keeping and billing practices. Can you talk about how you how you ended up working with her? Uh, Mrs. Christina Bell was actually uh, get, uh, given to me by the board to be my monitor. Um, but we had uh, we would go back and forth with emails with any questions I had regarding if everything was received by her uh, on a timely manner or not. Thank you. Did she ever have any issues with your practices? No, she didn't. Thank you. And uh, are you continuing with that monitoring at this time? I am, uh, but now it's, uh, I believe, is a Tammy Pito that's taken over for Christina Bell. Thank you. On page five of the packet, um, one of the reasons that you are requesting early termination, you said, was due to the restrictions on your license in that you haven't been able to join any insurance networks, which impacts patients choosing you. How has that impacted you financially? Uh, I mean, it's obviously I don't get to see the patients that want to see me because they're in pain because they want to utilize their in-network benefits. But since uh, a lot of insurance carriers, because of the probation, will not take my application at this moment, I can't see them. So they would uh, rather go to somebody in-network. Thank you. Can you speak more to the board about why you feel that you have become rehabilitated at this time and, and that your actions warrant early termination under probation? I know that you've mentioned this briefly and there's plenty of information in the packet, but specifically are there some nuggets that you would like the board to really hear about? Well, there's uh, several, like you said, the financial uh, responsibility associated with uh, being on probation is very high. I have two babies at home that I need to take care of. And uh, so financially, it's very cumbersome. As far as there's been several patients that are even cash patients that, that come into me with pain and discomfort. And once they're in the office and signing the paperwork, with every paperwork, I do have that disclosure associated. And uh, once they read the disclosure, um, they they choose to walk out because they don't feel comfortable being treated. I believe that my past work with the big packet that I uh, supplied to the board shows my repentance about what I did. Um, it was a big mistake, and uh, I recognize my mistake, and that's why I'm in this particular situation. I'm so... Um, focused on making sure everything is correct, making sure that I'm very transparent uh, as far as um, insurance carriers for my malpractice insurance. That's another big issue for me is that the major insurance companies like NCMIC, because of the probationary issue, will not grant me you know, insurance, but rather a third party um, which doesn't, you know, is not as uh, as good as the NCMIC, which I would like. Um, other than that, I just feel like I'm doing everything to the best of my abilities. I, I feel like I'm, I'm taking care of patients. I'm making sure everything is transparent. I've um, incorporated one of the best uh, EHR systems in my practice, which everything's electronic. Um, with a push of a button, they can get their notes, they can get the date they came in, everything that was done for that date, what they paid for that date, their insurance charges, if it's uh, related to insurance. Um, but yes, it's, uh, it's restricting in many ways. Thank you. Do you have, um, other than what you're currently doing, do you have plans if your license was reinstated for any other specific activities that you would be doing? Um, no, I don't. Thank you. At this time, I don't have anything further. 
Thank you. All right, I'm now going to ask our board members if they have any questions, starting with our chair, Dr. Paris. Thank you, Judge Larson. Uh, good morning, Dr. Deva Gohar. Uh, thank you for being here today. I, I just want to first commend you on um, all your rehabilitative efforts, and uh, I have no further questions. Thank you, Dr. Paris. All right, then moving on to ask um, our vice chair if uh, if he has any questions, Dr. Adams. Yes, good morning. Uh, I don't want to mispronounce your name, but is it Deva Gohar? Yes, is that correct. OK, good. Morning. Thank you again. I commend you also for efforts and uh, and for your pursuit of things. Just just I just have a couple of questions. Um, as you know, our focus is on rehabilitation and the potential um, harm to the public if we were to take your restrictions off of your license because then our oversight becomes different. Right now, we're able to, to, to follow and to make sure you're doing those things as you comply. Um, one of my questions is I reviewed your packet. In the beginning, um, it appeared to me that your um you kind of shifted responsibility off of yourself for what happened and uh and shifted that to an employee that uh, had supposedly embezzled from you is that my is that correct is that my understanding of early on in the investigation um, at the very beginning of the investigation yes i had okay so what i'm curious what what caused you to get to the point where you accepted that responsibility and do you recognize that now that you that you fully accept responsibility for for those actions oh of course i fully accept responsibility i know i made a big mistake um obviously we all learn from our mistakes and uh, it will never happen again um i i have demonstrated have uh rehabilitated myself and how much focus I have now in this new practice to make sure that these things never happen again. Like I said, I'm the only one in charge of my building practices and make sure that everything that goes out is by me. Yes. So you, you in no way continue to maintain that, that you are a victim of somebody else. You understand that, that you're responsible for, for those actions and that you're going to continue to need to be responsible in, as the way you have been. 100% yes. The other question um, I have is um, you also use for reasons for us to terminate your, your probation early is that you're having difficulty um, getting on insurance networks. That's in correct. California. So are you aware of, of how many doctors are on insurance networks? What percentage of chiropractors in California actually are on a network? Uh, I'm not, no. Because the percentage is very low. Most chiropractors in California um, are not part of networks. Most of them. Our so, Dr. Adams. I need to remind you that the board members are limited to questions only. Got it. Okay. All right. So, so, um, what insurances then are you, are you billing now? Are you engaging in personal injury? Uh, I do have some personal injury cases. Uh, it's I'm out of network with most of the insurance carriers at this point. Almost all of the insurance carriers, not in network with anyone. So do you, you bill, you bill medical? Payments for personal injury cases. I you bill well, a patient's a, med pay if they have it's it. A, it's usually on a lean basis, uh, and I work with the attorney. Once I'm done with the case, I submit my bills to the attorney, and uh, I wait. <laughs> so you don't bill any medical payments for a person's car insurance if they've been in a car accident. No. It's usually up to the attorney to deal with that. So what insurance companies do you bill now? Are you a Medicare provider? I'm not a Medicare provider, no. 
So are you, you had mentioned in your, in your testimony about, are you, are you doing any billing of insurance then? So yes, I'm, do, I'm, I'm billing out of, as an out of network provider. Uh, the only issue with that is a lot of, uh, uh, patients, their out-of-network deductibles are extremely high now. So that's one issue is that they can't afford to pay that out-of-network deductible they, compared to their in-network deductibles. So a lot of times they choose to go to another provider because of that. Um, so it's mainly because of the deductibles being so high. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have no other questions. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, I will ask our um, next board member in, in order, Ms. Cruz, do you have any questions for the petitioner? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, so I want to acknowledge you for kind of all the efforts you've put in place to this point. It is definitely recognized in the packet that you've provided. Uh, my question is kind of, in addition to the new system in place that you have in place, what other safeguards, I'm going to call it safeguards, um, kind of do you have in place to kind of right not fall into the system and I, I you've mentioned already um, that you've uh, what's it called oversee your own but I'm wondering more of peers are you kind of engaging with kind of with other chiropractors just to kind of keep within the chiropractic community any associations the reason I ask this is because I, I want to know that you're Though you're overseeing your business on your own, you don't find yourself in an island as you kind of come out of probation. Uh, I, I actually don't associate with other Kairos in the area, but I, I'm fully in charge of my billing practices. Uh, I inspect every single bill that goes out because I obviously it's an electronic health system, so I have an outside biller. Um, I'm the only one that touches the building. That that okay. to ensure nobody else messes with it. I can't afford to have this issue happen again. And let me extend my question. What is your current support system? I think kind of just be beyond um, beyond the work, because I, I imagine everything you're going through right now is very stressful. So I'm where I'm coming from is, are you kind of able to maintain? Uh, I would say. A good head on your shoulders as you continue in your career. Oh, of course. I mean, I've I've come. Of, it's been a very very long journey for me, as you as you know. Um, number one and foremost is my family. They're a big. You know, I have two babies um, that I need to take care of. Um, they're a big support system. My CPA, he's he's been a big support system. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I right, thank you. Of course. All right, Dr. Daniels, any questions? Yes, I do. Thanks. I'll try and keep it brief. Good morning. Um, uh, first of all, I'll echo the, the same uh, as the other board members as far as your packet and the effort. Um, and I did appreciate your outline that you wrote for us. It was very clear and succinct, which we don't always get. So I appreciate that. Um, I guess what I, my uh, main thing that I want to hear from you is you know, the amount that the case was charged for, you know, as I'm reading through the case, it, it's, you know, it was like $4,000 or whatever. It's such a small amount. Um, it, it's just, to me, in my head, it's just not worth it. It's never worth it, right? Because it's, it's you know, not respectful and lawful and moral to the patient. But um, so my first question is, um, you know, what's your thought process? Like, why did you even engage in that? The other part of it is it did seem that you put everything that the billing manager was responsible for your soap notes as well as the billing. And that concerns me because that's not true. Um, and then the other is once you found out the error, you know, because mistakes happen, it's very difficult to manage everything. Once the mistake happened, why didn't you just give this person their money back? So I would like to hear from you in your words. I just, I, I'm struggling a little bit with trying to understand your mindset at that time and where you are today. If you could just briefly sort of bring me up to speed on those topics. I believe at that time I was uh, so reliant on the office manager. 
I didn't oversee my billing practices. I had left it up to her. Um, at the same time, I was very, it was a very hard time in my life as, as you know, I don't want to bring up old wounds, but uh, she was embezzling a lot of money. So I was, my head was all over the place. I was under a lot of stress. Um, and I just neglected to oversee my practice. It was a big mistake on my part. And I've shown, the, I mean, I've, I've uh, stated many times that I'm regretful for what happened. I, it was a big lapse in judgment in my part. Um, but under stress, we do crazy things. And I think that was the situation. It was I was under a lot of stress. Um, So yeah, it was a, it was a big lapse in judgment. I should have never done it. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate you saying a lapse in judgment versus mistake, like you were saying before. If I use the wrong code and I don't mean to, and I kept like that's a mistake. Providing false documentation, telling someone to do something that they shouldn't, that is more a lapse in judgment. So I appreciate you clarifying that. So, Dr. Kittles, um, I, I just need to remind the board members, you are only limited to asking questions. Yes, so okay, sorry. Um, so, my other question is, to, based on Mrs. Cruz's uh, question, you had a lot of stress at the time, made some errors. What is your emotional support system currently? My emotional support system? Yes. Uh, my emotional support system, like I said, is my wife, my kids, my family, um, and myself, to be honest. It's, uh, I'm my biggest crit critic at this point. I make sure that everything's on point. I make sure that, uh, that I try to do everything right. And obviously Mr. Zona has become a good friend of mine and, um, I'm almost like a mentor and I can always, you know, call him with any kind of issues that I have and um, make sure nothing ever like that happens again. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Dr. Sandino, any questions? Yes. Uh, Dr. I don't want to give the name as well. Deva Gohar. Um, yes, cool. I want to commend you as well for your actions to follow through on the rehabilitation and um, apparently all the transparency changes that you made in your office. Um, my big concern now is providing that the future, what, what's your patient care like? Because overall in the end, if this ends up going through, you're still taking care of patients. And how do you view now the changes that you made in your patient care? as a doctor to help them? Uh, I would like to say, I, I would like to think that my patient care is very good. Um, I mean, in the past couple of years that I've practiced in a new office, um, as if, if you look up my, my practice and the Yelp reviews and the Google reviews, um, uh, people write paragraphs because they're so happy because I am very hands-on. I don't, it's not just an adjustment for me. I treat them like family. We become friends. Um, so I love my patients. My patients love me. And I make sure that before anybody leaves, I say, are you happy with your treatment? And almost always it's yes. Has this event caused increased better patient care to you, in your opinion? Uh, I believe my patient care has always been good. Um, as stated with the old patient PS, he even mentioned that my treatments are good. It's the only issue he had was the billing. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sweet, any questions? Yes, just a couple of quick questions. Um, good morning. I, I think earlier you mentioned that the uh, CPA that you've been working with was was part of your support system. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And and. Um, will you continue to work with that CPA after if your probation is terminated? Yes. Okay. What capacity will, or in what respect will you continue working with that same um, CPA? Uh, I might even have transfer all my uh, accounting services to him because he's actually good at what he does and he's, uh, he's well recognized in the field. Okay. 
That's all I have. Thank you. Sure. All right. Just opening up one more time to our board members. If any other board members have additional questions. No. Ms. Heim, any follow-up questions? No, not at this time. Thank you. Mr. Zellin, is there any questions you want to ask before we move on to closing arguments? No, thank you very much. All right, then I will uh, ask Ms. Heim any closing remarks. No, I do not have any closing remarks. I am just here to ensure that they that the board feels they've received adequate information in order to make a decision. Mr. Zellin, any closing remarks? Just given the uh, high level of self-circumspection that Mr. Diva Gohar has undergone and continues to uh, illustrate in his life, uh, we would ask the board to, to please consider this uh, uh, with uh, great uh, care. We, we think that he's, he is well-deserved of this and has really demonstrated that he is uh, cognizant of what he did and aware of the changes that needed to be made, has done them and continues to act in that regard. All right, matter submitted? Submitted. Matter submitted, Ms. Heim. Submitted, thank you. Matter submitted and we are off the record. Thank you, board. Thank you. And this All is right, just the court reporter for the um, DCA El Dorado room. The um, council on the left that spoke, I don't have the spelling of that name. It, on, name, it only comes up El Dorado Room. And those are the um, board members, yes. I will um, also go for uh, Jeanette Cruz, J A N E T T E, last name Cruz, C R U Z. Is that it? Because there was a, a San something like San. Sandino? Yes. Sandino? Yes. yes, that's what yes. I need. Yes, she spoke. Oh, Can you oh. spell that name? Dr. Claudia And those are uh, our board members. Right. Thank you so much. All right, and from our court reporter, I just need a page count and end time for this hearing. Yes, end time is 943 and page count is 36. All right. All right, then we're going to move on to uh, our next petition and order, petition for reinstatement of um, Leon Patrick um, Weathersby Jr. And this is the moderator. I have given uh, Leon Weathersby the permission to mute and unmute himself. And Leon, you will be able to turn your camera on now. And we do see you. Good morning. <laughs> and we do hear you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Mr. Weatherby. I'm uh, Marcy Larson. I'm the administrative law judge who's presiding over the hearing this morning. You do not have counsel, correct? I do not. That is correct. All right, though. All right, then. In just a minute, we're going to go on the record. I will announce the case. And after I do that, I will briefly explain how the hearing will proceed this morning. And then if you have any questions, you can ask me at that time. All right. All right. As soon as our court reporter tells me she is ready, we will go on the record. Ready? Ready? On the record. Good morning. We are on the record. It is May 24th, 2024, in the matter of the petition for reinstatement of Leon Patrick Weathersby Jr. This matter is being heard before the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California. This is OAH case number 2024-040863. Uh, case number AC 2018-1164. Our board members are all present and this forum has been established. As I explained, my name is Marcy Larson. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings presiding over the matter this morning. May I please take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General. Thank you. Good morning. Patricia Heim appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California. I am here in a fact-finding role. My role is not adversarial, but merely to check the public interest. Thank you. Right, and Mr. Weathersby, you are representing yourself this morning, correct? 
Yes, I am. And you understand that you could have had an attorney represent you at your own expense? I do. And you're choosing to proceed on your own behalf? Yes, I do. All right. So I'm going to briefly go over how the hearing will proceed this morning. The board is primarily concerned with the rehabilitation you've undertaken since, since your license was disciplined. Ms. Heim, the Deputy Attorney General, will proceed first. She will submit the petition package into evidence and give an orientation of the history of your license and discipline. I also believe you submitted some additional documents, which she will also um, um, identify. After she is given the overview of uh, the matter and move those documents into evidence, you will have an opportunity to present your case. I will swear you in and you may provide the board members any information that you believe will be helpful for them in making a decision with regards to your petition. Understand, of course, that the board has the benefit of your petition package, so you don't need to specifically um, repeat anything that's in there. But if there are matters in the petition package that you want to bring to the board's attention, of course, you can do so. After you provide testimony, I will ask Ms. Heim if she has any questions for you. And then I will ask uh, the board members each if they have any questions for you. Now, you may object to any question that's asked of you. If you have an objection to a question, you need to please let me know, and I will decide if you need to answer the question. Okay. Right. Any questions for me? No. Right then, Ms. Heim, if you would please uh, address the petition documents and provide the board members with an overview of this matter. Thank you. I would first like to mark for identification and offer into evidence as exhibit one, the petition packet, which consists of the following. The petitioner and the board members, along with the ALJ, have been provided with a copy of this packet. It consists of the following. A petition for reinstatement of revoked license signed under penalty of perjury on April 18th, 2023. This is followed by a petitioner's answers to questions one through seven of the petition, a letter from petitioner's treating therapist, Sheena Smith, LCSW, approximately 10 certificates of completion for continuing education, which includes approximately 13 hours in ethics. There are approximately five summaries analyzing articles commenting on behavior related to petitioner's discipline. The decision and order granting Mr. Weatherby's petition for reinstatement of revoked license and placing his license on probation for five years with specific terms and conditions, effective November 12, 2010. This is followed by the accusation and petition for to revoke probation in board case number AC 2018-1164 filed on January 2nd, 2018. Followed by the Board of Chiropractic Examiners decision and order adopting Mr. Weatherby's stipulated surrender of his license with attached first amended accusation and petition to revoke pro probation in that same case. Also included in the packet are the following. An email from Mr. Weathersby dated July 21st, 2023, requesting an update on the balance of his investigative fee reimbursement and the attached three letters of recommendation from Phil Yamamoto, spelled Y-A-M-A-M-O-T-O, -A -A Doctor of Chiropractic, Carolina, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-A, -A, Fernandez, H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, the site manager for Meals on Wheels, and Steve C. Landis, L-A-N-D-I-S, Doctor of Chiropractic. Board's decision and order, effective December 16th, 2018, adopting Mr. Weatherby's stipulated surrender of license and order. Oh, wait, excuse me, that's a, 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 a duplicate. I apologize. The accusation and petition to revoke probation, the initial, in the same board case number. 
and the Board of Chiropractic Examiner's decision and order granting Mr. Weatherby's petition for reinstatement and placing his license, I don't know why this is in here again, on five years probation with specific terms and conditions effective November 12th, 2010. I apologize if things are duplicated. I think they're in the packet though. The board's decision and order adopting the administrative law judge's proposed decision in OAH case number L20060308160. In board case number 2005-494, which revoked Mr. Weatherby's license number DC-22887 and ordering that upon reinstatement of his license that he paid costs of $2,643 prior to the restoration of his license, which included the attached accusation number 2005-494 filed November 5th. November 28th, 2005. There is a letter to petitioner giving him notice of hearing and proof of service of the today's date and time dated April 23rd, 2024. And he submitted supplemental materials, including a certificate of completion for an additional 12 hours of continuing education, including three additional hours of ethics completed on April 24th, 2024. And there is email correspondence regarding his participation in career day at Lawndale High School on April 11th, 2024. Additionally, Mr. Weatherby's has paid the remaining balance of $2,389.50 of his total cost recovery of $13,389.50 for case number AC2018-1164. Those costs have now been fully paid to the board. At this time, I would offer this packet into evidence as Exhibit 1. Any objection, Mr. Weatherby, to any of those documents that Ms. Fine um, identified? No. All right, Exhibit 1 is admitted. Thank you. And now I'll provide a brief background for the board. On August 16th, 1993, the board issued chiropractic license number DC 22887 to Mr. Weathersby. This license was revoked by the board effective September 21st, 2006, reinstated and placed on probation effective August 27th, 2012, and surrendered to the board effective December 16th, 2018. Effective September 21st, 2006, through the decision and order in case number 2005-494, Mr. Weatherby's license was revoked by the board based on his March 16, 2005 criminal conviction for violating Penal Code Section 487, Subdivision A, Grand Theft of Personal Property, a felony, in the matter of People v. Leon P. Weathersby Jr. in San Bernardino County Superior Court, Case number FSB04876. <clears throat> On July 29th, 2010, Mr. Weathersby appeared before the board to petition for reinstatement of his revoked license. The board granted the petition effective November 12th, 2010, and ordered petitioner to take and pass the California Chiropractic Law Examination the special purposes examination for chiropractic, take an ethics course, and to reimburse the board $2,643 for its investigation and enforcement costs prior to reinstating his license. Mr. Weatherby's license was subsequently reinstated effective August 27, 2012, and placed on probation for five years. While he was placed on probation, the board filed an accusation and petition to revoke probation against him on January 2nd, 2018, under case number AC 2018-1164, based on his false representations regarding disabled person parking placards for approximately five people and emotional support animal letters for approximately 10 people. The board subsequently filed a first amended accusation and petition to revoke probation against Mr. Weathersby on September 24, 2018, 
with additional causes to revoke probation based on his failures to submit billing, monitor, and quarterly reports to the board for his first and second quarters of 2018. Mr. Weathersby subsequently surrendered his license to the board effective December 16, 2018. There have been no previous petitions since Mr. Weathersby's December 16, 2018 license surrender. Pursuant to California Code of Regulations, Title 16, Section 365, Mr. Weathersby has provided evidence of sufficient continuing education to fulfill the continuing education requirements for each year that his license was surrendered through the date of his petition for reinstatement, the years of 2019 through 2023. Mr. Weathersby is now re petitioning for reinstatement of his license, and because the burden is on Mr. Weathersby, I have no further statements, but reserve the right to question him after his statement. Thank you. And Mr. Weatherby, Weathersby, now is your opportunity to uh, provide any testimony you want the board to consider. So the first thing I'm going to do is swear you in. If you would please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under a penalty of perjury that the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Right. You may lower your hand. Please state and spell your name. Leon Weathersby, L-E-O-N-W-E-A-T-H-E-R-S-B-Y. All right, Mr. Weathersby, just a few ground rules to make things go smooth this morning with your testimony. As you know, we have a court reporter and her job is to take down everything that's being said at the hearing. So it's very important that you keep your voice up. You're doing a great job of doing that. So just continue that. Um, if you would also just please speak a little more slowly than you're used to speaking in the conversation, that also helps to make sure that she can follow along and that we all can follow along with your testimony as well. After you're done providing your testimony, I'll ask Ms. Heim if she has any questions for you. And then as I explained previously, I will ask, also ask our board members if they have any questions for you as well. And then I'll make sure that you get the last word if there's anything else that you wanna add before uh, we um, conclude with the hearing, all right? Very good, thank you. All right, you may begin. Okay, good morning. I would first like to thank the members of the board and the Deputy Attorney General for the opportunity to come before you today to present my petition for reinstatement of my chiropractic license. I first received my chiropractic license in 1993 and had been practicing for about 13 years when in 2005 I was convicted of insurance fraud I committed within my practice and I pled guilty to one count of grand theft. I was afforded the opportunity to avoid prison time by paying back full restitution and completed one year of house arrest as well as being super on supervised probation with law enforcement for three years. As a result, my chiropractic license was revoked by the board in 2006. From this time until 2008, I took complete and total responsibility for my actions and made myself available for counseling, rehabilitation, and with, with a lot of self-reflection, conversations with family, friends, clergy, and colleagues, I was eventually prepared to go before the board and petition for reinstatement of my chiropractic license. I was granted the opportunity to practice again, and my license was reinstated with terms of probation for five years, quarterly reporting, billing monitoring, and to abide by all laws and stipulations of my probation. During this time, I was attempting to rebuild my professional career and had to work in various clinics, private practices, and medical offices to make ends meet and provide a livelihood for myself and my family. From approximately 2016 through 2017, I worked for a clinic in the MacArthur Park section just outside of downtown Los Angeles. There I was hired to provide chiropractic care and treatment to a large population of the patients, as well as DOT examinations for the FMCSA, as I was a certified medical examiner or CME. 
In that facility, I was part of the medical team that included MDs, physicians assistants, emergency medical physicians, medical assistants, nurses, acupuncturists, massage therapists, and myself, the clinic chiropractor. A routine complement to the medical services that the clinic provided was handicapped parking placards and emotional support animal letters for housing and travel purposes for the patients under care. Sometime during early 2016, I was asked by staff if I could provide a patient with a handicapped parking placard. The patient was a clinic patient being seen by the medical team for a variety of medical conditions, but was also under my chiropractic care. Since I had previously provided patients under my care with these parking privileges due to their disabilities, and knowing that providing this certification was within my scope of practice as a chiropractor and was within terms of my probation with the Board of Chiropractic Examiners, I agreed to certify the parking privilege for that patient. Soon after that, I was asked by staff if I could pro also provide an emotional support letter or a, a emotional support animal letter or ESA letter for another medically co-managed patient that was also under my chiropractic care. Now, however, in this situation, I had never previously been asked or provided such a document to a patient under my care. I was hesitant at first request to prepare the letter, so I went to my superior, the physician's assistant who had hired me. He explained to me he felt I was qualified and able to provide these letters for patients since I was considered a physician within the state and federal government. Because this patient requiring these accommodations was a clinic patient and part of her diagnosis included a mental health condition, he continued to explain that I could certify her ESA letter since I was part of the medical team treating her. After his convincing, I agreed to write the letter for this patient. Now, you have to understand where I was in my life at this time. I was desperately trying to rebuild myself professionally and financially. Losing my chiropractic license previously took a significant toll on me and my family. I lost everything, including my wife of 10 years, my practice, all my savings, my home, my cars, all my assets, my dignity and respect of family, friends, colleagues, and the profession. I didn't want to disappoint my employer. The guy that hired me, the clinic that gave me a decent livelihood again, and the ability to regain financial stability and professional respect. So I wrote the ESA letter for that patient. I justified my decision, not only with the encouragement of my boss, but in my own rationalization that, yeah, I'm a physician, just like the other medical providers in this group. I'm educated, well-versed, and capable of evaluating, recognizing, and assisting in the management of patients with mental health conditions. Part of my undergraduate degree in chiropractic education included the successful com uh, competition, completion of extensive coursework and study of psychology, mental health disorders, and clinical diagnosis. I further justified my decision to prepare this patient's ESA letter because I was a CME for the FMSCA. Part of our training was that we would have commercial drivers come before us to renew their two-year medical certification. And many of them had mental health conditions that required medication, such as antidepressants and seizure medication. And I was asked to make a medical determination on these drivers who had these med uh, mental health conditions. If the federal government was allowing me to make a decision on a driver's ability to operate a commercial vehicle, then providing a simple ESA letter to a patient for housing or travel purposes didn't seem unreasonable, unreasonable to me at the time. Following this introduction into providing patients with ESA letters and DMV parking placards, I had the not so brilliant idea to start marketing and advertising these services. 
At the time, Craigslist was free to run ads for these types of services. I began to place ads on their website as often as possible. My thought initially was that I would advertise these services that included an evaluation and certification if the patient was considered qualified and at the same time would be an effective way to recruit new chiropractic patients for, my, for myself and the clinic. I thought this was a slam dunk, win, win, win. A win for myself, a win for the patient, and a win for the clinic. This advertising continued for approximately April 2016 through December of that same year. I believe I provided five DMZ, DMV handicap parking applications and 10 ESA letters for patients following an initial consultation and evaluation of these patients. In each case, I failed to thoroughly assess and properly examine these patients in order to formulate a reasonable evaluation and disability assignment. I failed to provide any actual treatment to these patients. I failed to provide any follow-up treatment to these patients and failed any referrals to other healthcare providers who could appropriately treat these patients. And in the case of the ESA patients, I failed to refer these patients to a mental health care provider, such as a psychologist or a psychiatrist. In many of these cases, I made false representations and falsely certified or verified the patient would was under my professional care and management, when in fact they were not, as I had only seen most of the, these patients only one time and provided no actual treatment. In retrospect, I admit that my conduct was unprofessional by giving recommendations for handicapped parking privileges and emotional support animal letters to individuals when it was inappropriate to do so. I also was grossly negligent in the fact that my actions fell below the standard of care while handling these patients. The fact of the matter also, I can admit that these negligent acts were repeated and continued to fall below the standard of care while managing these patients. I now understand and admit that my actions were immoral, dishonest, and corrupt by giving recommendations for handicapped parking placards and ESA letters for these individuals when it was inappropriate to do so. Lastly, I admit to the shortcomings as fraudulent and misrepresentative and to be a violation of my probation order with the Board of Chiropractic Examiners. On October 26th of 20, uh, 2018, I agreed to surrender my chiropractic license bestowed upon me by you, the California Board of chiropractic examiners. As I hope you can well understand, this again was devastating to myself and my family. At this point, I asked myself, how did I get myself back into this situation? What was I doing wrong to once again lose my license? How careless had I been with my misrepresentations to my patients, the profession, and myself? I should have been more proactive and determined to get the answers to the questions I had about these types of evaluations and certifications from the proper authority and not my supervising physician's assistant. The board should have been my first to contact when this question arose. At this point, I was broken. Now without a job, without a license and no foreseeable source of income or livelihood. What was I going to do? Well, fortunately, I have a background and degree as a personal fitness trainer. I've been lucky enough to be working independently since 2018 training clients. I primarily provide private and group training to those looking to get in better shape, whether it's weight loss, strength training, spinal stability, injury prevention, or those in need of motivation with a professional approach and plan that meets their needs and budget. Honestly, I really didn't have much time to dwell on what had happened to me. No time for a pity party. No one other than me and my family was losing sleep over me no longer being able to practice again. But my back was against the wall. 
I had bills to pay, rent to pay. It was time to figure out how I was going to earn income without being a chiropractor. But there was still a lingering pain in my heart. Why was I continuing to make mistakes that got me in trouble? Enough trouble to lose my license over again. Well, coincidentally, while training one day in the gym, doing seating rows, I severely strained my lower back. I had immediate shooting sciatic pain down my right glute and hamstring. <laughs> I was a mess. I had antalgia so severe, I had to let laterally flex so far to the left. I looked like the number seven. I, I tried to manage the pain myself, but after several weeks, the pain just hasn't wasn't getting better. I pleaded with my medical doctor to get an MRI because I knew there had to have been a disc involved. Not only was there a disc, there are two, and both four millimeters each, plus spinal stenosis and a significant amount of degeneration. The medication I was taking wasn't really helping the pain or my problem. Actually, it was just making me tired and less productive. At this point, I knew I needed chiropractic care, maybe spinal decompression or traction and consistent adjustments to get me out of pain and back to my typical active stuff. So I called a good friend of mine, actually a classmate from chiropractic school. Long story short, after several treatments, rehab and avoiding exercise and activities that compromise my back, I'm feeling great again. But I think more importantly, this experience in a sense brought me back to chiropractic. I actually rediscovered the gift we possess as chiropractors. By now personally being a patient and actually receiving great quality chiropractic care that it helped me get out of pain and return to an active quality of life I was accustomed to. Our, abil our ability to heal, fix, and correct was one of the main reasons many years ago I decided to pursue a chiropractic career. This belief was reaffirmed my intention to pursue and do everything within my power to have my license reinstated. However, I knew there was much work to be done. Just wanting to have my chiropractic license restored wasn't enough. I needed to do a deep dive into what was the flaw or flaws in my personality that let me down professionally in the past. That resulted in a criminal conviction and two disciplinary actions by the board. At this point, first, I knew I needed professional help. In the past, I relied upon my church, friends, family, and other various online self-help resources to educate myself about my poor decision-making and other choices that got me into trouble legally and professionally. I was also experiencing depression, anxiety, and insomnia as a result of my indiscretions and just couldn't get rid of the negative thoughts running through my head about my situation. Nighttime, downtime, or whenever I wasn't busy with work and I had time to reflect and think about my circumstances was the worst. So in September 2022, I began seeing a therapist for these problems. During our weekly sessions, we dug into some of the motivating factors that I was operating from and how they affected my thought processes or lack thereof or, or judgment without contemplating the consequences or repercussions. I had always prided myself on being a high achiever, both in school and professionally. I have always been ambitious and entrepreneurial, but to the detriment of my craving for success and money. This desire started early in my life. As a kid growing up, a very humble means, the child of a single parent mom who did her best to raise me and provide for me. But I always seemed to want more. A big house instead of the apartment we lived in, a nice new car instead of the Ford Pinto she drove me to school in. I wanted to go on vacations and visit other countries, or for that matter, other states and cities. I wanted nice clothes and shoes and all things I didn't have. I wanted with a passion. 
So during my therapy sessions, my therapist and I uncovered the root cause of the poor decisions I had been making were heavily influenced by my desire to succeed and money motivated at a very, er, very early age. This pattern has continued into my adult life now with the ability to achieve my dreams and desires. I operated loosely and carelessly. Despite the level of standard of care for my patients, I was expected to exemplify as a chiropractor practicing in California. A good example of this professionally was not being thorough and detailed with my consultations, evaluations, examinations, and documentation with my patients. Much of my decision to rush through an appointment with a patient was to be able to get on to the next patient. Again, greed and money motivated, all at the expense of my patients, in a rush to ju judgment without weighing the consequences. My moral compass had been clouded. This was a reminder to myself that I took an oath as a chiropractor to serve my patients to the best of my ability. This was not my best. Now, how was I going to conduct, conduct myself in the future? If I was fortunate enough to be given another chance and my chiropractic license was restored? Well, First, with the help of my therapist, we developed a plan in regard to identifying situations in the past I would make snap or quick decisions on without thoroughly thinking them through and acting upon them without contemplating the consequences and potential risk to my, myself, my patient, the people of the state of California, my colleagues, my profession, or all of the above. Examples from my past would be the types of advertising I put out to the public and the message that was conveyed. I should be more careful and aware to avoid misrepresentations and sensational statements. I need to be more aware of time and my decision making. Time is on my side. There is no need to rush to a decision, especially a poor decision. By nature, I'm a very impatient person. During my rehabilitation, I have learned that I must slow down. Now, not everything I put my mind on is going to come to fruition. Success doesn't happen overnight. There isn't a short road to success. The best road for me to take is slow and steady. Positive outcomes will occur by taking my time. Do not take advantage of my patient's trust and confidence in me for, this, uh, for the mere sake of compensation. Next, if able, whenever I have doubt about a situation that could arise in practice, whether it's a doctor-patient matter or professional or business-related matter, I should fir first look to the board for guidance and answers. In the past, I failed at performing this critical step. And honestly, not that I hadn't considered it or that it didn't realize the board had such resources, but honestly, I failed to do so because I didn't want to hear the answer no. This has been a serious character flaw that has culminated in the tragic and avoidable loss of my license to practice. I have a great amount of regret and remorse for my actions and inaction and would like to reassure the board if given the opportunity to have my chiropractic license reinstated, they have 100% of my word and commitment to practice ethically and maintain this high level of professionalism, especially when in doubt about certain matters. Also, I have my chiropractic community to rely upon for help and insight with matters that appear to be a gray area or subject matter that is unclear to me or that requires further conversation and discussion. While I was able to practice for many years, I, like many chiropractors, became isolated from my colleagues. So many of us get busy and preoccupied with the struggles of maintaining a viable practice, let alone family, personal finances, and just plain life, period. This isolation I now understand was detrimental to my downfall and loss of my license. 
Had I been open and transparent to a few close chiropractic buddies, I'm sure they would have pointed out many of my great ideas were just bad ideas. And I could have encouraged me to not, not to pursue them. Had I been more proactive and maintained these relationships with my colleagues on a regular basis, all of this could have been avoided. During my time away from professional practice, I had time to reflect on what I was thankful and grateful for. There were many who helped me along the way achieve what I set out to accomplish. From the many teachers in the public school system I was educated in to the local business owners who had employed me from age 16 to adulthood, I owed many in my community a huge debt that I felt needed to be paid back. So I began volunteering a few years ago for Meals on Wheels. Being able to give back to my community by volunteering significantly helped me regain my passion to help my fellow neighbor. To see the joy on the faces of those women and gentlemen on my route when I delivered their much appreciated and needed food, the feeling it gives you puts everything into perspective and what our true purpose is as human beings. Simply, it's to love and help one another. I was also recently invited to speak at a high school career day in the very same school district I graduated high school from. I represented myself as a retired chiropractor and presented to the students the pathway to a chiropractic career. The talk was a success and I was asked to speak again at their next scheduled career day. I've continued my chiropractic continuing education studies by completing a total of 108 hours of approved live and distance learning CEUs. I've continued to study on my own and provided a number of articles and books I have read that has, that has added to my education and enthusiasm for staying relevant and current within the industry. Respectfully, I have also paid all investigative fees incurred by the board in, the, in regard to this matter. I would like the board to know that I am truly sorry and remorseful for my unprofessional actions that led to the revocation of my probation and chiropractic license. My unprofessional conduct, fraudulent misrepresentations within the scope and outside of the scope of my chiropractic license I know I now understand to be immoral, dishonest, and corrupt. If given the opportunity to have my chiropractic license reinstated by the board, I promise to obey all laws, statutes, and rules that govern the practice of chiropractic here in California. I also would like to ask for forgiveness from the board as well as my colleagues and the entire chiropractic community for the embarrassment I caused to our profession. I would also like to ask for forgiveness from the Office of the Attorney General, the Office of Administrative Affairs, and the Department of Consumer Affairs, and let them know as well that if I am once again able to practice chiropractic, they can be assured that the health welfare and safety of the people of the state of California under my care will be held in the highest regard. Lastly, I would like the board to know that I believe I have rehabilitated myself from these transgressions described earlier with the help of other professionals and colleagues. I believe I have provided you today with documentation that supports my efforts at rehabilitation as well as my sworn testimony that I have a clear understanding of my missteps, how and why they occurred and how I will never, if given the opportunity, let my professional conduct and actions fall below the standard of care expected of me. I realize that my apology and remorse alone does not indicate to you my rehabilitation but a truer indication of this rehabilitation should be demonstrated professionally over an extended period of time. I'm asking the board to consider granting me this opportunity. I do not expect full reinstatement of my chiropractic license, but licensure with a period of probation with conditions that satisfy the board 
would be very much appreciated. My request for a second chance at redemption, I do understand may not be granted. However, if given, I guarantee the board, you will not have to make a decision on my license for a third time. I feel as though I have many years remaining if given the chance to provide great quality chiropractic care to my patients in my community. I thank you all again today for your time and consideration. All right, Ms. Heim, any questions for Mr. Weathersby? Yes, thank you. Mr. Weathersby, I want to go back. Thank you for your statement. But I'd like to go back. You were talking initially about um, when you were first asked to do the placard and the the animal um, licensure sort of stuff. It was it sounded like it was within your practice, and then you moved on to doing that on your own. It sounded like that that was just something that that you thought, oh, I can do this. Right. Okay. So um, it also sounded like you might have had questions, but I'm wondering, did you know at the time that your failure to assess, did you have an idea that that was something that was a problem? At, at the time, I didn't realize that it was a, it was a problem. Um, you know, at you know, I, I like I said, I had the brilliant idea. I thought at the time that this is a way that I could generate more new chiropractic patients for myself and for the clinic with that advertising. Um, and again, uh, looking back, those assessments, those examinations, those consults, they fell short of what was expected of me in determining those disabilities with those particular patients. So um, it was a failure on my part. I take full responsibility. Um, and in looking back in retrospect, yes, it, it, it was wrong and inappropriate. And you were on probation at that time, though. Right? I was, I was. So were you you were providing the board with quarterly reports and kind of checking in with the board, right? Exactly. Okay, so you 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 had an awareness that you needed to be mindful of making sure you were following the rules and regulations for the board. Right? Correct. Okay. So, but but I'm hearing you now say that in reflection, you're looking back at that and realizing that was very inappropriate. Is that? Okay. Correct. It, I, I should have notified the board again, gray area. I had never done those prior to, and especially on probation, I should have asked. I, and again, in the back of my mind, I knew that probably the board would have said it was not within your scope, especially the ESA letters. DMV placards was a different situation. And I was able to um, provide those parking placards to those patients in need. Okay, thank you. Um, you also talked about, you said you're, I'm an impatient person, right? That's right. And then, so, and you, and you've talked about therapy. Are you still in, in seeing the therapist? We, we still have a schedule. It's more on an as need basis. I was seeing my therapist weekly for a number of consecutive weeks. Um, she felt like, and I felt like I was doing better um, dealing with the issues that I was dealing with at the time. So at this point now, our plan is if lucky enough to receive my chiropractic license back from the board, and if I begin practicing that, we would then resume weekly meetings, especially once I start back to practice again, if given that opportunity. Thank you. What kinds of things, have you talked with your therapist about strategies to sort of take a look at and maybe create a plan for dealing with this impatient person? Um, 
identity that you have? Like, how how do you deal with that? Yeah, what are kind of your absolutely, threads? absolutely. For for me now, um, in the past, I was quick to make a decision, uh, whether it was a marketing and advertising choice, or if it was um, a service that, again, getting back to the emotional support animal letters that I was doing. And, and really looking at, okay, what am I actually being asked to do here? Is this within my scope of practice? Uh, and it, does it require, you know, co-management or another set of eyes to take a look at this, especially somebody within a more specially, especially related to mental health conditions and situations. So. Um, we have talked about risk mitigation and strategies along those lines. And it and again starts with asking those questions. If again, it's a situation that I feel I'm unclear upon, uh, about, or if it seems to be a gray, ma uh, gray area. Okay, and that actually leads me to another question because you said something in your, in your uh, answer to question four on which is located on page three of the packet you were you mentioned seeing a therapist and you talked about that you developed a strategy for what you would do when you identified a sort of a gray area and I'm assuming you're talking about chiropractic about your practice as a chiropractor is that right correct Correct. Okay. And, and my, my, what my abilities are under, under the, the um, governing of my license with the board and situations, again, that may not be clear to me as far as what type of evaluation or examination I can perform. Um, I, I definitely have a strategy formulated with my therapist that we're going to discuss it with the board, we're gonna discuss it with colleagues. We're gonna discuss the situation um, with my attorney if necessary, um, and, and really to have a better understanding and multiple ears involved on hearing the case that I'm in question about. Okay, thank you. Because, so would you agree that when you identify a gray area, it would be pretty paramount that you would need to check with somebody about the legal ramifications of that. It sounds like a good a gray area isn't a good place to be as a chiropractor. Right, absolutely. And in moving forward, and if if given my license back, I, I tend to hope to avoid those gray areas and be just crystal clear on within the lines within within that. I plan on working within. So uh, good chance I'm gonna be avoiding those situations completely. Thank you. And kind of related to that, I did wanna to touch on your, you talked about doing the career day at the high school and you said you represented yourself. I may be misspeaking as a retired chiropractor. Correct. I didn't want to present myself as a licensed chiropractor um, the fact that I, I was no longer practicing, but I had a, a, um, career as a chiropractor, they still felt that I would be a good source to discuss with the students on what it takes to become a chiropractor, the road to becoming a chiropractor. And that was pretty much the extent of the discussion. Okay. I'm wondering if it if you mentioned to them the fact that you had discipline with the board. It seems like that might have been a, a great teachable moment for high schoolers. Of course, uh, and I did contemplate that. Um, at the same time, I didn't want to present a, a, a negative light on the profession, so I chose not to. However, uh, I if asked to get into that with a student uh, and uh, probably more importantly, practicing chiropractors. One of my good friends, uh, one of my mentors, one of my colleagues is a chiropractor and conducts chiropractic uh, educational seminars. And he has asked me to speak before 
chiropractors attending the seminars in relation to my situation, what had happened, and why my license was disciplined. And I told him I would be happy to. Thank you. Thank you. And just one more question. I, I was reading your support letters and I noticed that the, the letter from Carolina Hernandez did not make any mention of your discipline with the board or your conviction. And I was wondering, because I noticed the other two did, mm -hmm. is she aware of that? She was not aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I, Apologize. One more question. What is your plan? If your license is reinstated, what, what is your plan for what you would do with it? Well, I have a number of clients that I'm currently training that are in desperate need of chiropractic care. So that would be a starting point. However, um, I really would like to find a chiropractic office that would be willing to accept me to practice within I really would like a simple um, ethical office to be part of and, and to be able to give what I have as far as my abilities and my experience as a chiropractor to work within. And um, for me, I think that would be the best scenario. I do not plan on working within a medical facility. Uh, if given the opportunity by the board and having an overseeing um, um, person that's going to be kind of uh, checking with me quarterly with quarterly reporting. I assume that would be part of my probation once again. Um, I would this time prefer to have a chiropractor do that. I, in the past, I had a physician's assistant that was that supporting um, doctor and so if given the opportunity this time, it would I would choose a chiropractor to help. And actually, I have two good, close chiropractic friends that would be willing to do that for me. Thank you. At this time, I don't have any further questions. Thank you for, for your candid information. Thank you. All right, I'm going to now ask our board members if they have any questions, starting with the chair, Dr. Paris. Uh, hi. Good morning, Mr. Weathersby. Thank you for your detailed testimony and uh, and all of your rehabilitation efforts. Um, Thank you. I I have a, I do I have a couple um, just brief questions. Um, my first question is: When was the last time you practiced as a licensed DC? I when was the last time you adjusted somebody or treated somebody? I I believe it was two thousand and eighteen but I'm not, not quite certain. Okay. Um, thank you. And uh, I just want to confirm what I, what I heard. You are no, you are under therapy. You have the therapist that, uh, that wrote your support letter, but you are um, at a as needed stage. Correct. If, if I had any issues, if I had any situations where I felt like we needed to get back into therapy sessions. Um, she said that we would go ahead and, and resume at that time. The plan is once I do, and if if lucky enough to receive my license back and to begin practice, then we're going to start back because at that point, I'll be back into situation of practicing and decision making again. So we just want to have some you know, reinforcement there to make sure that I'm operating sure. as, as I should be. Mm -hmm. Sure. And what was your approximately, what was your last um, date with the, uh, the your uh, therapist? I, I believe it was probably um, around uh, January, February of this year. Okay. And have you had a need to have a as needed visit since then? Or that was your last visit was January, February? Exactly. No, I haven't actually. I've been doing pretty well, um, sleeping better at night, uh, no issues or problems regarding the anxiety or depression, and um, just been been in a good place actually. And are and you're still working as a fitness trainer? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Um, and then I just have one. Uh, 
one last question, um, actually two. Um, in the letter, it's, it says that you have identified, uh, in the letter from Ms. Smith, your therapist, it notes that you identified colleagues with whom you feel comfortable with to seek out professional consultation. And have you sought out professional consultation? And if yes, I'm wondering what those issues were. Uh, as far as I believe she's referring to colleagues being chiropractic colleagues. Yes, it's so, not stated, but I would assume so, yes. Right. So yes, I, I actually have uh, two really good friends. Uh, they, they both wrote letters for me that are in my packet, Dr. Phil Yamamoto and Dr. Steve Landis. Okay, so those two, those are the colleagues that that yeah. wrote you letters, yeah. and and my second part of that question was, have you leaned on them for any uh, professional consultation? And more specifically, really, I I, I kind of want to get an understanding of what the outreach was and what those issues were that that you utilized them for. Yes, actually, um, Phil Yamamoto uh, does practice uh, education, continuing education seminars. Uh, he has quite an extensive bit of knowledge about issues and reasons why chiropractors get in trouble. So we've watched many of the board meetings, listened to the board meetings together, kind of reviewed, discussed those situations. Uh, Dr. Steve Landis was actually in my class and we've been close for many, many years. Um, and has recently, I've revisited with him, especially he was the one that treated me for my back injury. And so we've been spending more time together discussing my situation. If I were to be back in practice and license, what would I be doing? How would I be conducting myself? And uh, it's been a really good resource, a really good way or chance to get back uh, in communication with practicing chiropractors. Understood. Thank you. And uh, um, my last question is, um, if your license were to be reinstated, I, I think you may have mentioned this, but I want to confirm um, you would accept any standard and optional terms of probation deemed necessary by the board. Absolutely. OK, great. I have no other questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we may have lost our judge. I don't see yeah. her online. I don't see her. Sure. We'll pause. And this is the moderator. I do not see uh, the judge in the meeting any longer. She had issues logging yeah. in. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Judge Wong. Um, judge Larson did just call me and say she was kicked out and it will not let her back in, um, but she is trying to get back in. Um, so, um, Madam Court Reporter, let's go ahead and go off the record for the time being. Yes, um, Your Honor. So, um, Dr. Paris, how do you, how do you wish to proceed? Do you want to, um, take a break and uh, have um, Judge Larson. Yeah, we were going to take a break after this anyway, but let's do that now. We'll take a 10 minute bio break and then we'll um, we'll come back and continue when she's back on with us. OK, and I will call her back and let her know um, to do that. And Madam Moderator, um, I, if she cannot connect um, um through video um should she at least i would think she could at least connect audibly through the telephone number correct i'm concerned at her report that it won't let her back in i would suggest restarting the computer but and that might be the 10 minute break might be a good opportunity to do that there should be no reason she can't get back in okay okay i'll let her know that thank you Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moderator, can we uh, put us on a break until 1055? Yeah. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. you. 